<coughs> well, we ran five weeks and we finished up in St. West Hartlepool. Then I had a few pals in a show called The Swanee Minstrels, and they said they were going to Castleford. And would I go with them for a week? Said, we'll give you a fiver. Well, that was a lot of money for me then. Well, I went over to Blackton as a minstrel, you see. But I didn't go so well. I went usually, bad. And then um, on the Tuesday, I met a young woman. And I fell for her. And, uh, well, five months later, I married her. And that was when my luck turned. See, I married Beryl, and then she knew a man in Newcastle called Thomas F. Connery. He used to run reviews. He gave me a week's work up there, and he liked my act. I don't know why, but he liked it. And he gave me a review contract for five years. Well, I never looked back after that. And I shall always be grateful to Beryl for doing all the business for me, you see. Anyway, I went on, on I went, and I worked, and I worked, and I worked. And, of course, it would take me a month to tell you all the different things Beryl's done for me, but some other time, probably. I'm getting back to the song now. And now I'm going to speak to the kiddies. You know, don't be as daft as I was. When you can go to school, I could have gone and I didn't. But you go to school. You do your own work. You'll find in later years it'll pay off. Because I was never blessed with kids of my own. And every time I sing this little song, well, I always feel a bit sad, you know. Day is nearly through. You're tired too. And I know you've done your best. Tomorrow morning you, your daily judge will do. So make the most of your night's rest. Good night, little fellas, good night. It's time to close your eyes and go to sleep. A bedtime story, though I could tell. You might repeat it by and by, so I'd sooner sing a lullaby. Someday you'll go your way. It may not be an easy fight. So don't give in. Make up your mind to win. Good night, little fellas. Good This seems to be confession night. <laughs> because during this afternoon, the producer of the show said he was going to put a banjo in the band, you see. I said, well, don't do that. Because they play proper harmony and I only play Chinese harmony. You see, what I've got to confess, folks, is that I don't understand music. I don't read it or write it. Although I play these things. And of course, you see, a ukulele is strung in a certain key and I can only play in one key. And a lot of my songs are in different keys, so I've got to have a different uke for each song. <laughs> you see, nobody's ever heard that before. They think this is a gimmick, all this lot. But the trouble is, sometimes I pick the wrong one up. <laughs> and then it's every man for himself. <laughs> of course, I'm skating on thin ice, telling you things like this, you know. But, ah, that brings me to another song. You know, about 30-odd years ago, I had my first big hit. Well, it's not a bad song. It shouldn't be bad. It's been kept in cold storage all these years. Open the fridge, Wolfie. Let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> <coughs> Now, 
always a new amusement that is getting all the rage. You'll find that it's good exercise for folks of every age. Now I go there most every night and sometimes take the wife. I've never had so many ups and downs in all my life since I've been sitting on the ice in the ice rink. Sitting on the ice with my skates off is the finest fun I've ever had. Put it on the ice, it's a never go back. There's lots of nice young ladies. And how I like to tease them. If they don't give way or say okay, I sit them on the ice and freeze them. Last night I went out walking with the pretty little miss. She said, I like you very much and gave me one big kiss. She was a perfect little blonde and not so very old. She let me hold her in my arms, but blimey, she was cold because she'd been sitting on the ice in the ice rink. Sitting on the ice with her skates off. Oh, well, hot she must have felt. She sat up on the ice and the ice began to melt. She was so young and pretty, but what a blow that ball had dealt her. We couldn't pick her up in the ordinary way. We had to bring a fire and melt her. Last night I went out for a drink down to the cherry tree. I didn't go there by myself, I took some pals with me. We landed home at half past two, I rang the front doorbell. The wife said, where have you been? So I said, you can go to bed, cause I've been sitting on the ice in the ice rink. Sitting on the ice with my skates off, it's the finest fun I've ever had. Put it on the ice, it'll never go bad. The buttons bust off my trousers, I got into such a tangle. I said, have no the sailors on a night like this, and never let you break. This is Dango. <laughs> Thank you. You'll excuse me, Ringo, this is only water, you know. But just now, I was telling you about my dad. Mind you, I think he went the way he wanted to do. He died in harness, you know. Because in those days, stars had to work a lot harder than we have, you know. In London, for instance, when they came down, they had to work four theatres in one night. That meant eight shows. They'd start at one place, they'd go right the way around and back again. But it was a different business. They could show you ten years' work ahead in the date books. Today, you're lucky if you get ten months. Just depends where you're working. But anyway, I, um, he was a great fellow, you know, really. I wonder how many of you older folk in, that's watching or in this theatre tonight remembers this song. When Egan Smith ran second in the Derby last July, I was standing at the corner of the street. A fella dressed in uniform could easily see that I was standing at the corner of the street. He treated me and told me that the country wanted me. In life that Lord, he said I'd look a tree. He gave to me a shilling and I signed my name and then I was standing at the corner of the street. And for standing at the corner of the street, they dressed me up with spurs upon my feet. They put me on a horse's back to teach me how to ride. When I fell off the riding master came to me and cried. However did you come to be a soldier? I replied. I was standing at the corner of the street. <coughs> <coughs> I'm a bit tight tonight, aren't you? I could do with a strengthening bottle. Well, good night, all, and God bless you. Now then, lads, give me a card off.